So we've gone over a bunch of cool Z modeler stuff like the extrude edge and snapping to surface. We can also go in here. Let's let's grab a cube 3D. So we're going to go into our tool palette here. Uh, and if you want to get rid of your light box, just hit the comma key. Uh, go in here, cube 3D, drag it on your canvas, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D. Turn on our poly, turn your, your poly frame here. You can also do shift F to turn on your frame, poly frame. And like we mentioned before, you can go through here, you can now alt drag uh, on here, which you were able to do before, but now you can alt drag over this and get rid of anything uh, that you want. And if we hover over this space with our Z modeler brush, I shouldn't have mentioned that before, B, Z, M is your Z modeler brush. Of course, you can assign a hotkey to that. You can assign a hotkey to multiple Z modeler brushes that have the functionality you need. Again, go back and watch the previous videos on that. You can click in the description, I'll send you to the entire playlist. But we can now hover over a face and there's a new inset Right now it's at the single poly, but down here you're going to see we have equidistant options now. So instead of doing a single poly, I mean you can do a single poly. When we alt paint, that treats this as one single poly. Whenever you alt paint it, you know, it makes it white, and then it treats this as all as one single poly. Get rid of this one, treat this one as one single poly. Uh, you can also go up here to this one, and it'll treat this one as a single poly, but because we alt painted these, it's also going to grab those as well. So if you want, you can get rid of all of these here, and now you can just go in here and you can inset single poly. Uh, some more basic Z modeler functionality. If you inset one size, you can just go through here and tap, and then I'll go and keep those all the exact same. And then you go through here and make this one smaller, and then you can go down here and just tap, and then it'll make those all the same. So with at face value, you know, inset, uh, single poly, equidistant, it just keeps things equidistant. Very nice. However, if you hover over a face and you change it to standard, pretty much the same. You know, it, it gives you the same thing. Uh, and then also legacy, instead of doing a region, we need to go to inset each poly. And then now, uh, you know, very, very similar. So when you're on a, a single face or even an entire region, so if we do an inset, here a single poly with legacy. It'll treat these all as one poly, but it's going to inset each poly. So we'll go back to region, and now we can do this entire region here. Or we can hover over a face, and we can say standard, and do this entire thing. Or we can go back to equidistant, and do this entire thing. It gives you fairly similar functionality. However, that's going to change depending on the situation. One of those situations, let's go ahead and just hit Control W. Uh, that'll go ahead and make everything one poly, the same poly group here. And I'm going to go through here and I'm going to Alt drag over these faces here, and then we'll go back in here and we'll say Inset. Uh, you know what? We'll switch this to Poly Group All just to make it a little bit easier to understand. Because you can also go through here, you can Alt Paint, and then let go of Alt while you're still holding, have your tablet brushed down, and then just keep tapping Alt to give you a new poly group. And again, if you're just joining us. Go to my YouTube channel, this new intro to ZBrush, ZBrush for Ideation. That'll get you caught up. Same thing on my RStation page, ZBrush for Ideation. It's 50 videos, very basic functionality, Z modelers in there. That'll give you a more of a deep dive onto a bunch of this stuff. But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to inset polygroup all, and we have equidistant turned on. So when we drag this on here, you're going to see it's going to try and keep us uh, very nice equidistant edges, but it's also going to start introducing these little triangles. You can mitigate a little bit of that by going in here and turning on this uh, custom equidistant snap. So if I turn this on, it uh, still kind of does the same thing, but if you go in here and you crank that up, you may be able to force it to kind of snap those uh, triangles together. Another thing you're going to notice is it maintains that surface here. So even, well, you also notice it kind of broke that equidistant a little bit. The closer I get in here, the more it starts to be like, well, that's not so equidistant, is it? It's because our snap is turned up, so it's kind of throwing that off a little bit. As we move that down, it'll start to break just a bit. Now we can switch this back over here. We can go back to standard. We can start pulling this in. However, standard's going to start breaking that silhouette. You can see it starts to come in a little bit. You can also go back to legacy, and that'll get you a pretty good result, but you can see up here, this isn't that equidistant. So it's equidistant on the sides here, but up here, not so much. Then you can go in here and hover over an edge and you can say like transpose edge loop partial and just grab that entire edge and then just like Z scale it. Uh, and since this is a flat surface, that'll, that'll do the trick. But you can kind of see the difference just using this example of when you go in here and say inset equidistant, the result it's going to give you. And also another thing you can do is you also go through here and you can say, okay, take this one, hover over an edge with your Z modeler brush, collapse edge. You can collapse this in, but again, it's going to be kind of inwards. But up here, you can see these are all equidistant. These are all equidistant. It's just having a little bit of problems, you know, resolving equidistant from this side to this side.
And you won't always have these problems, but if you want to kind of get the best of both worlds, just crank this, crank this equidistant snap up. That'll get you pretty dang close. Because again, this is equidistant, this isn't. It's kind of splitting that difference along this edge here. Uh, but you know what? That may be okay, depending on what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, but between standard and legacy, there's a couple more choices in there to kind of get the uh, result that you want. Uh, but we also go out of here. Let's go out of edit mode. Say Control N, and we'll grab a Sphere 3D, drag it on our canvas, go back into edit mode, go down here to initialize. Let's change this to like 16 and hit Tab and 16. And then now go back up here to the very top and say Make Polymesh 3D. When we go through here and we start painting over, say, these ones, but there's the modeler brush, hover over a face, inset, polygroup all, equidistant, we'll say default. Now when we go through here on these angles, uh, it does a much more predictable job. However, if we go through here and we say, okay, let's try standard. Uh, here you're going to see it's going to start, as we pull that standard in here, see how it kind of keeps this straight? It doesn't really respect uh, that curvature. However, when we go in here to equidistant, it just slides along that original curvature there. If we go in here to legacy, kind of the same thing. Uh, but it may not be quite as equidistant as just the uh, equidistant option. So something to consider with the new inset equidistant options here. Equidistant standard legacy. You've got your snaps, which we were talking about. We also have some size limits. So if you have the default size limit, so no size limit allows you to just, you know, pull this in as far as you want. Uh, default size limit will kind of cap you until it starts probably having a hard time maintaining equidistancy. And then custom size limit, you can set that to whatever you want. So if you want to do like maybe 0.2, it'll kind of cap you there as well. So it'll give you kind of a, a max to kind of cap out at if that's useful for you. Now, just like anything in ZModeler, if you hold down Alt or you, you're doing the operation and you tap Alt, that'll give you new polygroups. That can sometimes come in handy. Uh, but yeah, that's the basics of all of the new equidistant options in the ZModeler brush.